Um, a very warm welcome uh, to all of you um, for this evening of um, conversation about um, the Sonoda Pathway, good news for Catholic women. Um, there is a question mark at the end of it, so hopefully we'll um, discover a bit more about uh, what that might mean. Um, tonight's event is sponsored by the Jesuits in Britain, by Root and Branch, and by Hinsley Hall, a hotel and pastoral and conference centre in the Diocese of Leeds. Um, and uh, just to tell you what's going to happen this evening, um, we're first of all going to hear from the four members of our panel, uh, and I'm going to introduce them as they come in. Um, and then we're going to have some conversation, hopefully, between the members of our panel, um, uh, talking from their different angles. And there's also going to be an opportunity for all of you, um, if you wish, to ask questions or make comments. If you put your questions or comment in comments in the chat, um, I will see them and I will read them out um, and ask some questions, um, uh, ask, ask questions to our panel. Um, uh, just to say that we're uh, recording this evening's event um, and that it will be available as a podcast. Um, it will be on the Tablet YouTube channel. Um, so uh, there will be an opportunity to hear it again or to share it with others uh, as well. So um, let's make a start. We've still got people coming in. Um, we've got quite a big crowd this evening, uh, which is wonderful to see. The first member of our panel is um, Professor Tina Beatty, who's a theologian, writer, and, and broadcaster. Um, you can hear her on uh, BBC Thought for the Day, for example. Um, until two, uh, August 2020, she was Professor of Catholic Studies at the University of Roehampton in London and also Director of Bigby Stewart Research Centre for Religion, Society and Human Flourishing. Um, and um, she's now in retirement and uh, remains Director of the Catherine of Siena College at the University of Roehampton and she is writing fiction as well. Um, so, um, Tina, over to you. Thank you. Well, the Synod Good News for Women, I think it's fair to say that there's an enormously mixed reaction that many, many women feel, I think, deservedly quite sceptical about whether this is good news for women, but also very aware that one way to be sure we won't be heard is to say nothing. So uh, with my sort of networks around the world, I'm very aware of the enormous vitality and energy and commitment going into this by women who are organizing gatherings in their parishes, who are getting involved in the events and consultations organized by their diocese and parish priests, who are organizing their own networks and groups and to providing feedback to the synod process. So there is going to be absolutely no shortage of opportunities to listen to women if they have ears to hear. But the big question is, do they? And that's where I think some of the skepticism comes in, that women have had so much experience in the church of raising our voices, trying to be heard, speaking out, and very often it's only those who are saying what the senior members of the hierarchy and the bishops want to hear. And there is the risk of that again now. I'm not in any sense saying that the voices of more conservative women don't have as much right to be heard as anybody else, but they have a head start. They're already um, ahead because they are not um, causing any consternation, setting cats among pigeons, raising questions about the most neurologic issues that affect women's lives, but are rather offering a sort of tick box exercise to what's already being done. And the risk is that the women who are not doing that will be marginalised and excluded by the voices who are. It's also important to recognise that the pandemic obviously for everyone in the world has been a huge challenge, but I think particularly for Catholic women who remain in some sense committed practicing um, in touch with the church, and of course many aren't, and there's a question about 
how will they be listened to? But for those of us who do, the past two years have been challenging, often very lonely and cut off from our parishes and Christian communities, but in another way, they've been very creative. Women have discovered within themselves resources for uh, nurturing faith and keeping faith alive, whether it's just by being priests of the domestic world with families who would otherwise be going to mass and turning the meal table into the Eucharistic feast, or whether it's those of us who have been meeting around the world on Zoom and finding that we have a sort of deepening and something is happening to our faith that's making us very aware we don't have to go back into hierarchical setups where we feel excluded, ignored, patronized, or even abused, if not um, sort of abused in the obvious sexual way. But, you know, there are many forms of spiritual abuse that women are familiar with every day, really, if they're practicing Catholics. So these are huge issues. There are huge opportunities. The world of Catholic women is a vastly diverse, interesting and engaged world. And, you know, maybe we'll come on to that later around the world. Different women are finding different ways to feedback. So is it good news for women? Well, the fruits of the spirit <laughs> will reveal themselves. But I think if this proves not to be good news for women, if we only hear what we're permitted to hear, if the process of having to submit everything through the hierarchy means a weeding out of voices they don't want to hear and no uncomfortable things come out at the end about sacramentality, about reproductive issues, about ordination, birth control, etc., LGBTQ issues, if none of that is on the agenda, we'll know we haven't been heard. And I think many, many women will say this is the last straw. So a lot hangs on this. It's a time of crisis spelt with a K 